Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag, and Merry Christmas to everyone. Let's get straight into it. Thank you very much, Mand Labs. Not Man Labs, Mand Labs with a D. Fragile. Do not drop. Ah, uh, I'm sure FedEx have dropped it. You've all seen those videos of what <laughs> some of the <laughs> courier employees do to packages, but my um, uh, uh, my FedEx guy is actually a fellow Canyoner. Um, so, yeah, no, I love my courier guys here, the local ones, they're great. But, yeah, you do see those horror videos. Anyway, we have a blue envelope thing. Oh, hang on. Hang on, it says do not drop, but I'm going to have to, there we go, there we go. Whoa. 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 Isn't this schmick, Mand Labs Kit 1, your personal learning kit for electronics. It's even got a carry handle on the top, shrink wrap for our protection, video pack, they got videos to go with it. Wow, this looks, um, this looks very very professional. I'm thoroughly <laughs> impressed by the packaging. Is it, does it come in two? Yeah, it might be two separate things. So, why there's a nut here? I, I just found a nut here. <laughs> might have come from the kit. I don't know. Um, what, this is, what's going on here? Breadboard carry... That's a breadboard carry case. There's your breadboard. You carry your bread. Carry your breadboard around. Oh, the breadboard's got little studs on it. Check it out. And it clips into here, like this. Ah, oh, there you go. So you build it. You build up your stuff on here on on your breadboard, and then you just fold it over like that. And how do you carry it? Oh wow, look, there's little things that fold out everywhere. Oh, look at the... This is the most professional electronics kit I've ever seen. Gerpelwind Mand? Is that... Gerpelwind? Is that... Yeah, Gerpelwind, I guess. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, from Mand Labs. Mand's his last name, I guess, so Mand Labs. Wow! That's... This is so professionally produced. It's incredible. How do you open the main case? Hang on, it's got a stud on the side. Hang on, there's instructions here. What is it? Open here. Open here. Does it lift up? No. I swear, it says open here. Look. Oh, it says open here. I, I, I'm trying to open it. This is, I feel hopeless. <laughs> this is obviously kid art. Oh, Ow, that hurt. Here you go. There's a thumb thing here. It says open here on the sides, but you don't open there. You open here and it flips up. Hallelujah. Oh, look at, look at this. Oh, we've got... <laughs> we're in a cheapy multimeter. <laughs> we got coils of wire. Nice. We got a... Hey, got a relay? Look at this. Got some switches. Oh. Got some ever-ready batteries. None of this alkaline rubbish. Fantastic. Good old zinc carbon. We've got some, and look at this. Oh wow. Unboxing your imagination step by step. Hello and welcome to Man Labs. You do it yourself electronic lab at home. We have a USB stick. Cool. Thank you very much, Man Labs. Wow. This is like wow. That's all our parts. There you go. This is ridiculously good. Wow, this is so professional. There's our multimeter leads. Yeah, hats off. This is this is seriously well presented. Probably too well. Oh no, my my cutters have come out. <laughs> oh my strippers, they're actually wire strippers. They've actually there you go. I think there's a screw. There's a random screw in there. Um, it, yeah, it's almost too good, you know? It's like, <laughs> I do appreciate the effort, but let me know if you're, I'm not gonna say it's, you know, it's wrong, but it's just like, <laughs> so much effort's gone into the packaging and the modular construction. Would, would anyone actually fold it back up and carry it themselves? I don't know if I would have didn't done that as a kid. I probably, you know, everything would be like, scattered everywhere by the time I got to 
play around with it, but like you know, but like a day of playing around with it, everything's like just all over the shop. Got a pot, already got the solders, uh, the wires soldered onto them. The tin copper wires go straight into your breadboard. Nice. So what's in here? I can see that I'm not gonna. Wow, that's a that's a fibrous, weird looking envelope. It's like a fiber envelope. It's not quite a uh, Tavec envelope, but it's like oh, there's a. <laughs> A bunch of leads have come out. Oh, they're funky looking blue ones. They, they look really like almost like an aqua blue. I like the look of those. Dear customer, in our endeavor to strive for the best quality, best quality always, we have partnered with a new lead manufacturer and hence we have upgraded our stock. Please note that the updated leads are industrial grade quality with focus on longer life and better performance. Even your one hung low shins in market cheapy leads are going to last forever, really, almost, you know. Um, as long as you don't like, as long as you only put in like 10, 20 milliamps through them. Because um, most LEDs are rated for, you know, at least 20 milliamps. Um, so at, on, on the breadboard level, I don't see why lead life would be a big deal, but okay, they're taking it seriously. So just a quick look at this up front, and there's our uh, little breadboard in there. So you build your stuff on there, and then you just close it over, but there's no catch or anything like that. I guess this is not a carry handle. I actually think that you're supposed to put it over like that and that sort of holds everything in place. That's kind of cool. That works. And these books that come with it, this is not Philo Vision, but these are these are really fantastically textured like a PVC kind of, you know, um, I, I think it is. I think it's like a PVC kind of thing. And, and the paper feels like the, the it almost doesn't feel like paper. It feels like something else. It's ridiculously high quality. Um, this is just, wow, rubbing glass with silk to generate. There you go. Oh, they start with, the, I wish they wouldn't start with the atoms. This is the whole, uh, oh, they've got Walter. There you go. Um, the big controversy at the moment about Walter's lecture on the EV blog forum. I might have to link that one in down below if I actually uh, remember it. Anyway, they start off with charge and under, is this the first book yet? Yeah, electronic series kit one. This is the big debate in electronics, whether or not you should teach the basics, the basics being whether you should start from the physics level or whether you should start from the, you know, here's how to flush a lead. Here's a battery. It's, it has voltage. Don't worry about what voltage is. Don't worry about all the electrons and all that sort of crap. Don't worry about that. Just build something first. And that's the big debate because, you know, if you go to university, you learn engineering, they teach you in the first couple of years is just all physics, maths, everything else, you know. Yeah, they do some electronics as well. But um, yeah, a good lot of it is just yeah, here's where they should have started. <laughs> but they tell you what charge is and all that sort of stuff. Wow. This looks uh, impressive. Anyway, they didn't dwell on that much, so that's great. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, super high quality photos and everything. Like, it's just like, wow. And res resistance, here we go. I'm so, yeah, here we go. Like, a conductor depends on the cross sectional area and stuff like that, like a row LA. Like, you don't need that sort of stuff in a beginner thing um you know that's how you learn it you know at, at sort of like a university level you know by uh, like teaching stuff like that so leds uh they didn't go into any non-linearity stuff there i don't think from the brief second i just <laughs> flipped through that you know here we go uh dual heat you know they're talking about dual heat and things like that like a, a fuse i yeah got the obligatory ohm's law triangle fantastic how potentiometers work. Oh, geez, I don't have to show you the whole lot, but um, <laughs> circuit combinations. And we've got series, and we're, I'm sure we're going to have parallel. We've got switches, beauty, capacitors. They show you the physical uh, construction. That's really good. Don't go into, you know, they talk about cool ohms and, and charge, you know, the relationship between charge and voltage. You know, I'm not, not sure that's needed at this sort of, you know, level. Um, but anyway, everyone's opinions vary, so let us know in the comments down below. Oh, we've got AND OR gates, uh, base emitter junctions, coil, magnetic field. So this is uh, your more advanced stuff. There you got your truth tables, fantastic, Boolean, like a bit of history in there. 
of logic gates. Anyway, it's ridiculously high quality. Here we go. That you know, history of diodes and the formation of diodes, and they're talking about you know silicon and no, uh, yeah. When you start drawing the atoms and stuff like that for a beginner kit, there's somebody just you know, a little seven-year-old kid wants to flash their leads and stuff like that. Like they don't care about the phosphorus atom and the extra electron and the doping and the boron and and you know, it's like it's essential stuff when you get more advanced in electronics, but. Yeah, <laughs> precautions, melted diode, <laughs> shattered diode, too much forward current, I love too much reverse voltage, I like that, that's nice. <laughs> so yeah, let us know in the comments what your preferred thing is, you know, should a beginner kit like this have stuff like that, you know, a lot, lot of people say, oh, it can't hurt, and stuff like that, others will say, oh, no, it just, you know, it'll bore people and like it'll put them off and stuff like that, but this, this, this scene, this is fantastic. Um, it, Wow, the amount of effort that's gone into this. And the box, of course, is crazy. This is uh, this all here is mostly wasted space. All that in there, they just had the breadboard in the uh, top there, the manual down the bottom. Anyway, you lift that up. There you go. <laughs> the shrink wrapped for our protection. <laughs> the Mastec $2 jobby. It's, you know, it's fine. It's good enough for, you know, a kit like this. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Got our pre-tinned uh, jumper wires in there. That's an interesting way to give you your uh, spare red, black, and green wire. As I said, we've got a relay. None of that alkaline rubbish. Good old heavy duty. That's not the, the, the heavy duty leak proof. None of that leaking alkaline rubbish. And then you've got battery snaps and you've got yourself a, a uh, micro switch there. Got the obligatory motor. And, oh, well, that's it for that. We have to take the rest out here. Look at this, Bobby Dazzler, multi-tech cutters, <laughs> terrific, jeez, oh, they've got a big ass spring on, jeez, you, your hand, for a kid to get the, that on their hand, like their hand around that is like almost impossible, I can barely do it. We've got various kits of components here, oh, <laughs> yeah, a couple of trannies in there, a couple of good old, uh, the old uh, carbon trimmers fantastic just plug into the bed board uh, more transistors down there fantastic obligatory uh resistors which aren't they don't have uh, labels on them to tell you the values but i'm sure they got the color code in there to tell you how to do the business yeah and what do we got in the bottom one? Oh, we've got to have a propeller for our motor fantastic and uh don't eat the desiccant bags trap for young players and uh and the whole bunch of leds which we got uh, replacements for a couple of uh went in four double oh ones and uh it's about all she wrote well you could say that that kit is kind of like it's thoroughly impressive but you could say it's overkill for such a beginner thing but yeah hats off to uh Gerpuin, um if i'm pronouncing that correctly Gerpuin man for that's the most professional uh like beginner kit i've seen fantastic but it's all about the video let's go to the video tape all right, this is what on, it's on the disc. It's got all the sand disc, um, the bullshit that sort of comes with all that. Like, what are the sandbox managers? Just delete all that. Like, it's just silly. Anyway, contents in here. Kit 1, standard edition. Claim your content. Claim your content. There you go. Um, oh, yeah, that's just the note that came with it. Claim your digital lessons, something like that. Looks like they've got an online thing as well. Um, your very own Google Classroom where you can meet your peers and other makers, share and discuss ideas, blah, 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 participate in quizzes, contests, and all that sort of fun stuff. So we don't want that for now. We just want our, like, where's our PDF for, for quick reference. All right, so this, this seems like a PowerPoint thing. Potential, symbol, ground, digital multimeter, how to plug in, all that sort of jazz. And, okay, so each thing sort of like a step-by-step -step for each type of one let's go have a look what it says for transistors shall we transistors could be interesting presents the transistor transfer plus resistance all that sort of stuff yeah bulk in that they give you history and the first single point transistor which is nice but you know you could argue that you know you're like a seven year old or a ten year old or something you're playing with this thing and like it yeah <laughs> but yeah hats off for wanting to do that sort of thing. Oh, how to download data sheets for the, that's great. Base emitter collector, curved surface, all that sort of stuff. 
Terrific hand, the transistor tester. <laughs> the fabled transistor tester in the $2 multimeter. <laughs> um, yeah. I've I've commented on that plenty of times. Once again, um, the two, uh, yeah, you can understand, yeah, P type. That, that's all you need to do for transistor and stuff like that. And then it's getting a bit fancier, and you know, emitter current is base current plus collector current. And you know, you're uh, yeah, it, like high school kids um, are probably going to understand this stuff. But you're you know, you rank a bit like B, beta. There it is, right? It th there seems to be a a mix of too much theory sort of mixed with practice here. It seems like, yeah, yeah, it's just a little bit too much, I think, there, but nice. Nice, though. They've gone to a lot of effort. Let's go into our level one reference. Basic electrical theory. Introduction to electricity charges, uh, currents in MP4s. Well, let's go to the videotape. Oh, unfortunately, it seems to be like there's something wrong with this USB stick. Like, it's not reading properly. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Is it a Shenzhen market clone ripoff fake thing? Because it's like I've never had a problem with my USB reader before. Yeah, something weird with that uh, USB stick. I was able to plug it into like a USB 2 port on the front instead of USB 3, and it worked okay, so I copied the files locally. So let's play the first one, Introduction to Electricity Charges. I won't play the whole thing. I'll just probably skip through it, but here we go. <laughs> That's a pretty professional intro. Manned Labs. Electricity and Charge. Very 80s, kind of, <laughs> 90s, you know. <laughs> Love it. In this video, I'm Ooh. going to introduce you to electricity and hey, charge. Hey, is that Mr. Man? Electricity is all around us. What? We have tube lights, fans, and TV sets. We have radios, calculators, and computers. We have mobile phones and touchpad devices. And you must know that you can think oh, they... just because of electricity. Yes! The colors you see. <laughs> what? This is completely cheesy. Oh, please don't do the like the cut-ins. I hate this is like like every Kickstarter, every crowdfunding video nowadays, they hire professionals to shoot it. Very professionally shot and edited, by the way. Absolutely brilliant. Um they've put a lot of effort into this. But um, yeah, they all tell you the same thing. Oh, you just shoot, you know, talk off camera like this and then shoot at a different angle and set up multiple cameras. It's just wank. Don't do it. Right, you know, just like talk to the camera, talking head, that's fine. And what's all this pop up? Yay! Or wee! Or whatever the hell it was. That's just no, no. And the music, no, just no. Educational content, straight up. Talk to camera, that's all we want is because of electricity. We can walk because of electricity. Our nerve yep. system is driven What's the by other electricity. Dude doing? Atoms, molecules, and chemical reactions exist because yeah. of electricity. We have cars, we have planes, we have trains that can only run gone through the whole because thing. of electricity. And right now, you are watching this video, and it is also because of electricity. So I can understand what they're trying to do. The background of electricity and all that sort of stuff. I just, yeah, it's just cheesily produced. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please tell me if you agree down below. What do you think of this kind of content? It's very well produced, very slick. What? Hi, we are here to decode it. Just a minute, Mr. Theory. Mr. What? No, I just lose Before you that. go further, and can you please tell us how electricity came to be noticed for the first time? Yeah, sure. There was a person in 18th no, century no, who was no. developed Jeez, positive. Don't show the other guy you're talking. And the silk what, what developed was that zoom negative. In? So let's do it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't. Oh, oh they're oh, rubbing the. Yep. Ooh. So, what next? So you what? see. Was that a fart sound effect? This glass rod. Has got positive, and this no, silk sari has got negative. Overlaid. Now nice he also overlays, discovered yeah. that if you rub balloon with your hair, with my own hair. I know that English isn't his first language, and it's you know it's difficult to come across. Yeah, it needs to be a bit more fluid, though. That's all. But uh, you know, 
Yep, so we're just demonstrating. Oh, yeah. Negative and negative. This universe. Then we've got the happens. graphics. The graphics are good. Then we don't. Nuclear. Yeah, as see. A is same. See, this Evolving. is all. And here's the debate. You know, it's. Do you teach kids they want to build they've got this electronic kit and they want to like build electronics they want to see motors spin and lights flash and this is the first thing that they've got to sit through learning about positive and negative charges and what is electricity and all that sort of stuff i don't i'm i'm in the camp where just get them excited first and then fill in the details later let me know down in the comments if you're in that camp as well um maybe it's just because that's how i started out you know and that's how a good lot of my, uh, of my audience started out is you know in the hobbyist we just took part of stuff we uh, took stuff apart we just you know built things made stuff work and flash we didn't care about the theory and all that sort of stuff and, and they're trying to do that here and i can understand why As because it's the textbook glass way of doing things you know it's, it's the way it these guys negative. were probably taught at university so you, know? you can think of charge and, yeah charge and negative it's now we're getting four C. What? One Coulomb. Is Coulomb. Like one e, See, we're talking about. Electrons, hang on. Six times. Ten raised to power minus nine. See, no, nah, this is the first thing. And this is the first video. We write charge as, as Q. Q. See, so they don't need to know five that. Five electrons have. Five electrons negative. No, nah, n is always an integer. Or two point five. Uh, like that, who's going to know? N is no. always an integer. No, no, nah, nah, sorry, I'm not. Nah, I'm out. Um, it's very well produced content, but beginners don't want to see that. So let's go into battery and voltage. Battery and voltage, this should be a bit more practical, energy. I hope. Energy. Where does this energy come from? The food, oh, right? The food we eat. Yes, sir. Whether it is yes, vegetarian sir. or non-vegetarian. Similarly, the no, no. we invent <laughs> terminal of the battery. Swing. Nine volts. With voltage. No, no please, please don't, don't go. go. Done it before. So let's do it. I'll use this 9 volt battery and I will touch its two terminals no. with my tongue. Oh no! This may be my last video too. <laughs> no, no, please, please don't, don't go. go. Oh no, come on. I, I, I fully encourage kids to try that, by the way. And it's not tasty at all. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's great. It's, oh, which are oh. inside tron of the battery. Oh, okay. They're trying to be... Yeah, okay. Glowing an LED. Glow your first LED. I want to glow my first LED. <laughs> this is going to be your first experiment on breadboard. See, like, this is our first one. Like, we only just got to our first going to love it. on the breadboard. Oh, God. Because you're going to light up the first LED of your life. Yep. LEDs are really fascinating. And you should have done this Thanks to Mr. Thing. Nick Holoniak, the father of LED. I can... Now, what uh, I like, want you to do a thumbs is up to that, look at the schematic. If you look at I the circuit diagram, argue it doesn't you will belong notice three symbols. In there. The symbol of a battery, which is 9 volt, the symbol of an LED, so you can choose LED of any color. The symbol of resistance, and the value of resistance which is used is 330 ohm. We need to learn how these symbols are connected. So I'm going to read out the schematic for you. The positive terminal of the battery, which is VCC, is connected to the positive terminal of an LED. Yeah, it's all the a bit negative slow, terminal of an LED is connected with one of the ends of a 330 ohm register and the right end Mention of the register polarity. is actually connected to ground. That a resistor can be both polarity, now we will battery, implement polarity matters, this schematic lead polarity matters. Mr. Practical that. will help us do this. Okay! okay. <laughs> this is great. So first step <laughs> is to connect a battery on the breadboard. For this, connect the breadboard. Okay, now they get into orange, the details orange, of... brown. Oh, there we go. Nice, nice graphics. One leg nice of graphics. this register in the same column where the negative terminal of the LED is connected. And connect its other leg... They to... might mention either way. Anyway. Flows in the circuit of the LED. 
positive or negative V1, which is equal to 3.38 volt. Don't need and to go the in voltage drop precision. across the resistor is equal to V2, which is We're equal to the of drop. the physicist Kirchhoff, and More we call it Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff's voltage law. And if there, yeah, okay, do. Beginners flashing a lead need to know Kirchhoff's voltage law. Riddle me that. Um, yeah, leave it in the comments. I mean, some people think that this is how it should be taught. Um, others uh, don't necessarily agree. But um, hats off. It's um, <laughs> very um, nicely produced content, if pretty cheesy. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> leave your comments down below. <laughs> like, this whole set was exceptionally produced thoroughly professionally produced from go to woe. Um, it's just whether or not you like that sort of style. Let us know in the comments. So if you'd like to check it out, it's over at mandlabs.com. Thank you very much for uh, sending it in. As I said, uh, like, <laughs> extremely professional. I'd, I'd argue that it's almost too... Like, like, they've tried too much, tried too hard to make it good. Analyze math and physics. Okay, if you want to get into physics, oh, we're talking nano amps and the powers are 10 and all that sort of stuff. It's probably, I don't know, like, it's at this sort of, some of the stuff in here is more towards the uh, high school level, you know, knowledge rather than uh, kids and, and stuff like that. So, but yeah, exceptionally well produced. Learn to prototype. Hey, we didn't get any LED displays. That's what I want to build. We want to build stuff like that. So it is quite a different, quite different to, say, the Tandy, you know, slash Radio Shack 100 in 1, you know, 200 in 1, 50 in 1 kits and stuff like that. The premium edition, I assume we got the premium edition for 169, 165 electronic components and tools, stuff like that, plus nine hours of uh, video library and uh, documentation and all that sort of stuff. As I said, like, you know, it's some first rate production on this sort of stuff. So if you want to check it out, link down below. Thanks. Got one from Australia. Thank you very much, Bren. I think it's Bren Martin. Uh, Breck? Bren? It's a bit hard to read. Anyway, from Race View in Queensland, No Knife Dave, it says. <laughs> you know I'm going to use the knife. Come on, look, there's nothing here. It's, it's fine. It's rolled up, bubble wrap down there. It's got the tongue at the right angle. It's fine. <laughs> we got a note. Pull. I'm supposed to pull. Oh, is this going to... Oh, hang on. Dear Dave, no knife. Mailbag would be less interesting with a dead host. Okay, love from Breck. It, it is Breck. It is okay. Um, okay, with a dead... What? Wait, oh, as in no more knife on the episode. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm Australian. This is like... We're practically born with one of these. No wackers. All right, so I'm going to pull this. Do I have to pull them at the same time? There was no instruction. Pull and pull. So. Yeah. No. Got to there. And then failed. No. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. No, but there's one. No. Foil by the note. No. 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 Fail. Fail. Seems like a. Seems like a mesh bag. Still completely. Oh, it's not, is it? <laughs> it's not, is it? Thank you very much. From well, don't know if you uh, Australia, um, non Australians. Well, if you're not into mountaineering, you may not mount know mountain designs. Um, <laughs> adventure store here. I don't know if they're anywhere. Are they Australian wide? I don't know. But if you've seen my. Was it in my, it, it was on my second channel. It was on my second channel where my harness, my canyoning harness um, failed. And this is a, this is a Petzl. This is a Petzl. <laughs> it's a Petzl Caladris 2, exactly the same as my one that failed. So um, it didn't fail. A lot of people took me, like, <laughs> the harness didn't fail. These gear loops on here failed. Looks like these ones have the same gear loop. Um, they might have the same plastic underneath. Anyway, this one's used. So, I... Where's the note? There was a note, wasn't there? No, I thought there was a note. Anyway, I've got a Petzl, a, well, a used Petzl harness. So how old is this one? 
does it have like a uh, a date code thing on it made in France for you harness aficionados if you can uh, decode the date code on that baby by all means yeah it's um, <laughs> a lot of people complained that I shouldn't have been using my harness so I think it was 15 years old I thought it was like 12 years old or something like that it's my canyoning harness a lot of people said oh blah, 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 you shouldn't be past the expect life expectancy of the harness and that's true if I was using it for climbing that was designed to prevent a fall but because I use it for canyoning uh, where you uh, you're simply abseiling you're fall falling under controlled descent at no time in canyoning is a harness uh, going to prevent a fall so there was no risk of that um, so it's actually very common for canyoning uh, at least here in Australia I don't know about canyoneering in the US but it's very common for people to be using like 20 year old harnesses and you know like really crusty old um, stuff it's just it's just part of the community you know it's part of the thing I know it's not good to encourage and I don't encourage it I don't encourage you using any harness past its uh, design past its recommended manufacturer recommended uh, life which I think is like five years for a Petzl climbing harness or even less depends on how many falls you sustain and you know all that sort of uh, jazz but um, yeah anyway um, yeah all the gear loops because the the PVC guy I think that there's some sort of poly put the kettle on plastic these ones actually have a, a material over them but uh, yeah my Petzl uh, Caladrus Harness. maybe it's an older one or just you know a slightly different variant actually just didn't have the material it's just got this feels like the same stuff um, some sort of poly put the kettle on material and the last canyoning trip I went on I'll link in the video on my second channel where I was just standing there and <laughs> my, my stuff my spare carabiners my Prusik loops and my knife and everything just started like fell off the harness then the first one failed then the second one then the third one and I moved my gear around and then the fourth one failed all on the one trip um, so obviously something had happened no it wasn't left in the UV it's stored in great conditions all that sort of stuff but something over time and possibly just soaking in canyon water maybe but like most of 99.99% of the time is just sitting you know clean and dry in my um, bunker so you know it's <laughs> anyway um, yeah Harness, climbing harnesses. Thank you very much. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this second-hand harness. Am I supposed to use this one? I didn't. The the other one I trusted because it was mine. <laughs> Actually, it was a friend of mine, and he left overseas, and um, he um, just left the harness with me. But yeah, I knew the history of that harness. So anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> don't use your harnesses greater than their expected life span. Thank you very much, Breck. Although it would be interesting to give this a try, wouldn't it? People like complain, oh, don't eat the stuff people send in your mailbags. They might poison you. Well, <laughs> what if I actually went and trusted my life to a harness that was sent into the mailbag? Hmm, that could be an interesting video. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. Cutting edge products made by makers <laughs> from Tindy. Like, did Tindy give you a sticker if you're... Um, you know, put a, a maker product on there. I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, Neville Nobody, for sending this one in. Got to love a good Nev. So let's crack it open. So obviously, I assume that we have a Tindy. You know, a, someone's got a little project that they're selling on Tindy, which is great. I love looking at little projects. We've got oh, some chippies. A whole bunch of chippies. Oh, we've got a PCB. It's all happening. RC2014 Mini. Saw the word basic programming. Do we have a... Wow. Okay. We have... I think we have a kit. Computer. A little mini kit computer. The RC2014. Um, oh, yes. I think I know this. It's... um. <laughs> yes, Spencer Owen. Random... From Random Ibis Hotel somewhere in Sydney. I was supposed to meet... Spencer at the RC 2014 uh, tour. That's right. There was a tour, and I I signed up to the meetup. It was a tour in the world. Um, it was like a vintage computer kind of you know aficionados meetup and stuff like that. And I wanted to go, and I had tickets tickets to go because it was you got tickets through a 
you know, a site or whatever. And um, and I had tickets to go, but unfortunately I had to cancel at the last minute due to family um, stuff. Anyway, um, it's, yes, he bought it all the way over here from the old Dart, uh, so he could give it to me at the 2014 meetup. It's the smallest in the RC2014 lineup. It's a 280 based retro, 280 based? Oh, Z80, Z, not 280, Z80. None of this Z rubbish, Z80 based uh, retro computer kit, uh, which runs Microsoft Basic from ROM, 32K of RAM, 7.3 meg clock, uh, connect the FTDI cable for 115K board, favorite terminal emulator, enjoy. Thank you very much, Spencer. This is fantastic. Um, Unfortunately, I'd, like, I'd love to do a live video building this, but unfortunately I'm banned from doing live videos on YouTube, on any of my YouTube channels. And I'm also banned from saying and promoting anything else, if you know what I mean. So, thanks YouTube, dickheads. Anyway, um, yeah, fantastic. So, I, I may not be able to build this one up. Oh. Look, I really want to build it up, but seriously, it is like 3 o'clock. It's 3 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and I want to release the video today. So, unfortunately, this is not going to happen. I'm, as much as I want to do it, I'm going to have to save this for another day after Christmas. Sorry about that. But we'll take a quick look. rc2014.co.uk for those playing along at home. And the store is Semek, the monkey. <laughs> okay, um, ZX uh, Spectrum ROM on Twitter, and here is the board, and it actually uses a genuine Z80, none of that, you know, newfangled uh, rubbish, you get a real Z80. Classic 62256, 32K of SRAM, 512K bit of uh, EEPROM there, and it's all through hole, absolutely no surface mount rubbish, fantastic C, got a gigantic header bus right up here, terrific. ROM select, and, oh, 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 there, okay, right, ROM select there, pointing in there, okay, for those headers. So you can select uh, different pages in your ROM and whatnot, and uh, there's also, and you've got IO uh, interface and some miscellaneous uh, logic, and that's all she wrote. Neat, I like it, the RC2014. Oh, you can plug it into a Raspberry Pi Zero, there you go, terrific. So I look forward to building that puppy uh, live when my, I'm not sure when it expires. The ban on my EEV Blog 2 channel. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. I got banned and I can't live stream. So I wasn't banned for live streaming. I was banned for some other stupid copyright thing. And one of the, and what they do, the only thing that they do to you is revoke your privileges to live stream. So I can't do that. I can't live stream on any of my channels. And I'm not allowed to tell you anywhere else that I might do something like that. Anyway, ridiculous. Thank you very much, Spencer. So uh, please remind me to uh, do a live stream build of this baby and I'll link it in down below. Oh, isn't it cute? It comes with all the chippies and all the bits and you get some Tindery stickers and you get some RC2014 stickers and all that sort of stuff. And starting, uh, here we go. It tells you how to... <laughs> which ones to install first and everything else. That's really quite nice. Oh, use resistor offcuts for the links. Yeah, absolutely. Got to have a drawer full of resistor offcuts. If powering from FTDI cable, uh, ground, portion for basic, all that sort of jazz. That's pretty. And we've got a bomb and the assembly guide. Well, isn't that nice? And there is the schematic. Ta-da! Simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Thank you very much. Flavio Miguel uh, Baltazar Valentin. Come on. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's go. Let's have a look. This one's been here a little bit. So apologies. There is a note. Speaking of things, sardines. I don't think I've had sardines here on the blog before. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I don't know what that is. Codfish, what? I have no idea what that is. 
Once again, it's yeah, it's tuned codfish, I think. <laughs> and we've got some leads and a note. Well, that's not a bad idea to have like uh, leads with the bullet connectors at each end and then just have like various adaptery things. So you can go to like banana plugs, you can go to easy hooks, you can go to crocodile clips, you can go to uh, little, oh, there, there you go, there's the pogo pins, nice. <laughs> so a whole bunch of stuff. Would have preferred to see though, they, they, that doesn't seem to be, they're not uh, silicone leads, so I would have preferred to see silicone, that would have been nice, but uh, oh, they're just uh, the pins, like square pins, you can plug them into the uh, uh, 0.1 inch headers and stuff like that, so that's quite a cute idea, I like it. And you might get into selling them if you want to uh, check it out. Email address down below. No website, not that website, rubbish. Thank you very much, Nicholas Malou from Canada. Hi to all my Canadian viewers. Um, from Mono, maybe from Mono Price? No, I don't think so. No, 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 it's got nothing to do with that. So, jeez, shrink wrap for our protection. How do we, for those who like their random, those who like their random bits of pieces. What on earth is that? Some sort of panel, alarm panel thingamabob. Don't get it. Do not use in aircraft, bad. So we have, have a bit of avionics kit. Quick, two, oh. It's got a thumb scroll, and open it here. Quick two minute tear down. G'day from Kanakistan. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Are they visited in 2013 to Caloundra? We will find in the box two related devices. Orange emergency locator beacon. Ah, that one, ah, the old 100 analog. 121.5 megahertz AM, powered from a regular nine volt battery. Yeah, I don't, I, they're still in use. Yeah, I don't want to, um, don't want to power it up. I've done a video actually uh, powering these up without the antenna and stuff and um, in like within a concrete uh, building so it couldn't escape and stuff like that. But there you go. Oh, get the plastic off there and we'll have a good squeeze inside. And the other device is an altitude encoder. It's a pressure sensor in an oven. It'll convert a pressure sensor signal in a digital encoding into a gray code. Oh, okay, that uh, hooks up with the transponder in the aircraft and uh, the air, that's how they can get the altitude from the um, uh, to the air traffic uh, control. There you go. Um, schematics to build your device. Plug in the altitude encoder displayed altitude in feet to test the encoder. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go to that sort of uh, detail, but uh, schematics can be downloaded here. Pick can be downloaded here. Thank you very much, Nicholas. And there's the uh, altitude decoder schematic that you can uh, hook up to this puppy here and uh, get it. There you go. Low adjust. Anyway, two minute tear down. I like that. A thumb screw that. Oh, oh, <laughs> that was complete. <laughs> that was completely uneventful. <laughs> I thought it'd pop open. Bugger. So let's have a look at the altitude encoder manufactured by Narco Avionics in Fort Washington, <laughs> Pennsylvania. There you go. So, whoa, oh, we got mooned. And oh, we've got a genuine mod resistor on there too. Thank you very much for playing. And header, solder in on the header in there. Looks a bit how you're doing. But let's, oh, oh, I bloody forgot one. I hate it when you forget a screw. There we go. And there's our little uh, oven. There's our, our crystal's going to be inside there. Well, our whatever it is. Um, yeah, we've got a, is that a tranny? Doubt that's a regulator. That's going to be a, uh, oh yeah, no, that is the block. There you go. So here's the external uh, uh, altitude, uh, you know, the uh, air pressure comes in from outside the aircraft and goes into the block there. And uh, it is temperature regulated, of course. That would just be a uh, a transistor. I can't readily read the part number on that right now. But uh, yeah, that inside the block. And um, that just maintains it at a temperature. So there'd be a, a thermocouple. Where's, where's the thermocouple? Must be on the other side of the block, is it? Yep, there it is, down on the other side. There's our temp sensor there. So, yeah, 2N6387 for those playing along at home. And that was just all inside the foam block, and that just regulates at a temperature. Oh, LT1008 for all you LT fanboys. And what else we got in here? Intercell 7109. 
Actually, I'm kind of surprised that doesn't have uh, conformal coding. I would have thought that'd be, you know, fairly standard in uh, aircraft avionics, but, you know, apparently not. And this is interesting because the Intercell ICL 7109 is just an ADC that hooks into a microprocessor bus, but there's no micro on here. There's just the 2716 EEPROM here, a couple of ULN uh, 2003, um, you know, uh, IO, like a uh, transistor arrays, and that's it. So what I think's probably happening here is this is set up as an EEPROM-based finite state machine to interface with the um, ADC. And uh, that reminds me, I said this on a previous video, um, in that I have written, I wrote a finite state machine compiler back in the day to do <laughs> basically what I think is happening here. They, they might be using it as a finite state machine or some sort of interface, um, you know, like a that doesn't need a micro uh, controller or micro processor in there. So that's, you know, just uses lookup stuff. So anyway, I probably have to do a video on that if I can ever find the old source code for that. Anyway, so I think that's what's going on there. So that's rather interesting in that um, it's just a non-microprocessor based uh, thing. So this is a uh, emergency locator beacon, 125.5 uh, megahertz, the old analog uh, system. I've done uh, teardowns, of course, on uh, uh, EPIRBs, which is uh, rather interesting again. And it has the 9-volt battery snap. So it's, I assume there's like a cover on the back, and it's I don't know if it just used a 9-volt uh, battery in the thing, but, you know, you would have want to... Like, usually these things use like, a, you know, proprietary lithium or a lithium primary uh, batteries. But anyway... Yeah, there's not much in there at all. Um, yep, that's an analog uh, transmitter, all right. You've got a crystal. You've got a uh, trimmer slug in there. And uh, <laughs> is, that a, is that a tranny? Yep. Yep, presumably. And uh, yeah, so it's a like there's a trans an RF output transistor, another tranny there to oscillate, and then another couple in there. And that's probably your output... Uh, a driver transistor and like Bob's your uncle out it goes so yeah guaranteed to work guaranteed to be reliable I'm sure that one's actually got uh, looks like some conformal coding on the bottom kind of sorta looks like it's not I don't actually I'm not 100% sure I mean, you can see a bit of the shine there but it's nothing on the top it's the ELT 10 and the details for those playing along at home and yeah, I don't know about that, like, just the the toggle switch there, you know, on, off, um, you know. <laughs> anyway, like, the difference between off and on is just that. Like, you know, you think they'd make it a bit harder than that. But anyway, external antenna, I don't know what an arm is. Why would you arm it? Has that got, like, a salt water activation? Or, no, there's no external thing, so I'm not sure what the deal is there. There's a reset button. Um, that, that's a mechanical Wow, that's a mechanical. What the, what on earth is going on there? How does that how does that work? What what is that? Okay, I can only presume that this is that this comes on when it's activated, and then this is to reset it. But then you can just switch it off. So and there's two screw terminals here. They go off to something else. So is that the salt water? Any sort of like activation? thing they're directly across the terminals there so i like I, it goes to some crash or water detection thing perhaps what is that and how does that how does that activate aha acceleration switch there you go <laughs> techna ink is it that's an acceleration switch so yeah, wow. What so this drops down onto those contacts there when like if the plane crashes. Presumably. Like cuz there's that's that's all it is. There's two contacts in there. And I presume that that little med, metal widget in there drops down under acceleration and that will just push it back. That's just a lever that pushes it back off. That's interesting. Right. So this makes sense now. When, you know, like you've got arm like that, like off is like, 
I presume you could access this somewhere either in the cockpit or outside the plane or something like that. So in normal flight, you would arm the things. So I don't know if you'd leave it off when the plane is like not flying and then part of your checklist when you uh, start up is to arm your emergency uh, locator beacon. That kind of makes uh, sense because it's all kind of like user uh, accessible. Otherwise the battery would drain if you just kept it uh, on all the time. But anyway, you keep it in arm and then, and then it uh, you, relies on this acceleration switch to... Uh, to activate if the plane crashes and given that it's um, those two terminals are directly there that could go off to some other salt water activation or any other sort of device to uh, secondary device to activate it as well or you know if you gently land your plane on the on the water or whatever um, you have to make an emergency landing and you're stuck somewhere you'd I don't know did like there could be any number of reasons you could land it anywhere um, and you might want to switch it on manually so there you go that is fascinating. Thank you very much for sending that in. That's, that's, ugh, ugh, it's got some ugh, greasy kind of stuff. Not sure what the deal, was this filled with something? No, is that, is that sealed? No, I don't think, oh, it's got a little thing up there. Anyway, there you go, an activation switch. So I'm not sure how I'm sure they've designed that, you know, an X amount of G-forces on there, you know, 100 Gs or something, or is going to uh, slam that into the contacts. And uh, presumably, it, like, is it, does it stay down there? You wouldn't rely on those contacts, would you? Is it like a one-shot kind of thing? I'm not sure what the deal is, but anyway, yep. <laughs> Simple, but this would have been super reliable and effective, I'm sure. This one could have been sitting here for a long time, so hey, that looks like a smiley face. That looks like a smiley face. Scan that and correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, um, sorry, this one could have been here a while. Um, they've completely wrapped it in tape just to annoy the hell out of me or prevent whatever is in here from falling out. So sorry if this has been, it looks, it was under the pile of stuff that's been here forever. Hello Dave, I've been watching for several years now and the amount of Lollinger game is immeasurable. Thank you very much. Is a, oh, a Pinero, oh, it's a Monero miner for mining Monero. There you go. <laughs> With the recent plummet, what's what's Monero doing these days? Drop 90% like everything else, but uh, it's a, it's a uh, Monero as well as for miscellaneous. The Monero miner was totally developed by me and released under the BSD. You are free to use it as you wish or repurpose it to mine for you. Please be careful which computer you run this on is somewhat annoying to remove. Oh, okay. Uh, strongly recommend you avoid GPL software and Linux as they are a cancer on Unix. Oh, here we go. Flame war down below and a gross mistake of history. Whoa. If you're, <laughs> tell us what you really think. If you require a Unix environment, then free BSD is a good starting point. I've included an extra USB device for you to pass along to whoever. The font I use for this letter, oh, the font I use for this letter is DIN 1451 for those playing along at home. I'll show you the font. Thank you very much, Jesse Wilson. <laughs> and tell us what you really think. I'm not see, sure if you can see what's written in the background of that note. Can you? Can you? <laughs> I don't know if I get the light at the right angle. Anyway, it says the 1070 Ti should not exist. Jesse's a tad opinionated. Beauty. And there's the DIN 1451 font for those playing along at home. It's a high quality German font. I hope you enjoyed as much as I do. Well, it is a very nice high quality font. I'm rather impressed. The 1070 Ti should not exist. I, I still don't understand that. Is there some thing about the 1070 Ti? Just that model? Eh, sorry, don't get it. Unfortunately, uh, Jesse hasn't included any uh, URL or anything to the software, and I don't have an air-gapped, suitably uh, air-gapped computer in the current uh, lab at the moment that I would uh, feel confident running this thing on, so... <laughs> So hopefully Jesse can uh, contact me and uh, the, give us a link to the BSD uh, code for this thing and we'll, I'll, I'll link it in down below. Check it out. Hello.